The deployment of our test bed was done in the TCS lab of the University of Geneva in the Battelle building. The sensors were deployed on the third floor, spanning several offices that were divided by a corridor. The environment of the experiment was less than ideal since the offices were in use, but we wanted to see the behavior of our algorithm in real-life conditions. In our demo, we used a Surveyor SRV-1 robot to play the role of the target. To avoid unnecessary complexity during the initial deployment of the algorithm, we drove the robot manually using the remote Wi-Fi command console. The same algorithm could just as easily be tested with any movement pattern. The goal of this algorithm is to use a passive network of sensors to track a moving target. Due to the topology of our installation testbed, the message range of the sensors has been reduced, so that while we have a connected communication graph, we don't have a fully connected one. The target features a sensor on board that sends beacon messages every one second. When any of the installed sensors receive this message, we assume that we have a target detection at this point because the target is close enough for the beacon to be heard. After a detection event, trace messages try to spread to nearby neighbors to propagate the detection information. The target followed two different paths moving from room to room through the corridor. This is how we are graphically representing the network and the operation of our algorithm on it. All nodes are represented by triangles. The smaller triangles represent passive sensors that have an intensity value of zero. Nodes that detect the target receive a maximum intensity value and are represented by big blue triangles. Since the intensity value of a node decreases over time, and intensity information propagation propagates intensity values smaller than the maximum, we decrease the size of the nodes and also change their color to black to differentiate them from detection points. In the following videos, we mark with red color the trajectory of the target and with blue the detection points. The sensors are represented by triangles and the size of the triangles represent the intensity value on each sensor. This value decreases over time from the maximum value which is set when a detection occurs down to zero. The lines you see connecting two nodes show that the trace intensity value has been spread between these two nodes. During the first path, the target moved rather slowly, which gave time to the intensity values to decrease faster than they would generate it. This fact, in conjunction with the facts that the algorithm features a built-in inhibition mechanism for traces propagation and the topology of our testbed allowed only very narrow paths, led to less spreading of the traces. The target positions, which are shown in the videos, are only an approximation, since no actual localization algorithms are assumed to be active in this network. By studying the experimental results, 
we noticed that while in simulation the spreading mechanism seemed to work fine in most configurations, this was a direct result of the large amount of nodes, the setting of the target speed and the adequate space given for propagation. In our experimental testbed, the algorithm seemed to function better when the settings were tweaked a bit, both in adjacency, connectivity and the target speed. Experimental validation showed that we can improve the outcome of the algorithm in cases that the parameters are not ideal, which in real life would be in most cases. During the second path, we increased the speed of the target. By doing this, we didn't allow the network to decrease the intensities before new detections occurred. This led to more traffic in the network and a better covered network with traces spread from different detection points. Our real testbed experiment clearly showed us that in order for the trace spreading mechanisms to work properly, connectivity issues should be first be resolved. We noticed irregularities in the spreading itself due to many unidirectional links and relatively low reliability of connections between our nodes. <laughs> 